Hi students, today we are making another video for the formula list. Today we are going to discuss the formula list for unit number 3, 4 and 5. So as we have only few formulas in this unit, so that's why we combine these three units. If we take a look at unit number 3, first topic we have related to investment in securities. So there mostly we have accounting entries, we will upload another video related to this topic. So if we talk about the formulas related to unit number three, it's starting from the topic of property, plant and equipment. So here the first formula we have related to initial cost of asset, like what are the elements which we should include in the initial cost of asset. So here we have purchase price, how much we pay to the supplier from whom we are buying the asset transportation costs, any kind of installation costs, testing costs, plus any kind of non-refundable taxes. Like if you are importing this asset, you paid the custom duty. It will also be the part of our initial cost. Another formula we have to use here, it's related to carrying amount, like at the balance sheet date, at which amount, our assets will be showing in the book. So here we have a formula historical cost minus accumulated depreciation minus impairment losses. Accumulated depreciation is the total depreciation charge till to date and impairment losses, how we define permanent reduction in the value of fixed assets or intangible assets because of internal and external factors. So, for impairment losses, you can look another video. So here we are just discussing the formulas. After that one, in this, uh, in the same topic, we have a formula related to depreciable base. How to calculate the depreciable base? It's equal to historical cost minus solvage value minus recognized impairment loss. Like solvage value, the leftover value after the useful life, and how much impairment loss we have recognized till today. So, depreciable base is actually the total amount of depreciation which we are going to charge during the whole life of fixed assets. In the same unit, students, we have two depreciation methods. We are talking about unit number three. In unit number three, we have few depreciation methods. The first one, we have straight line method. In straight line method, how we can calculate the yearly depreciation? What simply you have to do, depreciable base divided with useful life, you will have yearly depreciation. Another method we have unit of output method. In unit of output method, how you can have the yearly depreciation? Let's have first, depreciation per unit into number of units produced during the period. So how we can calculate the depreciation per unit? I mean, for one unit, how we can calculate? It's, it will be equal to depreciable base dividing by estimated total lifetime units, like how many units we can produce during the whole life of fixed asset by using this asset. So when you divide depreciable base with, base with estimated total lifetime units, you will have depreciation per unit, which you have to use here for yearly depreciation calculation if you are using unit of output method. Another method we have declining balance method here simply you have to apply the percentage like declining balance percentage we will have in the question that one you need to apply on the carrying amount. One simple rule students in calculation of depreciation you have to keep in mind that depreciation should not exceed the depreciable base that is the maximum limit of depreciation you can charge during the whole life of fixed asset. Another method students, we have sum of years digit method. In here, simple formula we use. Yearly depreciation will be calculated. Sum of years digit fraction into depreciable base. Sum of years digit fraction into depreciable base. 
how we can calculate this sum of years digit fraction say the useful life is five years we will just write the numbers in the order we will get here some 15 so you need to start from the end 5 over 15 4 over 15 3 over 15 2 over 15 and 1 over 15 so these are our sum of years digit fraction which you need to use in order to calculate yearly deficit first in our cma syllabus we only have these much methods of depreciation after that one you need to know the formula for impairment loss you already know the de uh, definition of impairment permanent reduction in the value of fixed asset because of internal and external factors we define as impairment loss so how we calculate the impairment loss carrying amount minus fair value in case you want to calculate as per gap you will use this formula carrying amount minus fair value you know the main purpose to calculate or to charge the impairment loss we want to bring our assets at real value and here for for the ifrs if you are adopting the ifrs you have little different formula so here formula we have carrying amount minus recoverable amount so this ifrs differences you need to keep in mind because you know that there are few treatments which have which have little difference if you are following gap or ifrs so here you need to understand what is the meaning of recoverable amount recoverable amount is the greater of fair value minus cost to sell or value in use the highest of these two values you will have recoverable amount and value in use is the present value of future expected cash flows after that one students we have amortizable amount here the word amortizable amount is similar to depreciable amount and uh, in the same units like unit number three four five we have a topic of intangible assets as well the good thing is this you don't need to memorize another formulas for calculation of amortization you can use the same formulas which we already discussed for the calculation of depreciation so there is nothing new for it so now we move to unit number four formula list in unit number four uh, you know that the most important topic we have actually the leases of course in exams you will expect the question from this topic so if we go to unit number four the first portion we have related to warranty liability calculations so here you can make this statement of warranty liability for your better understanding purpose the main purpose to prepare this statement of warranty liability you will have idea what are the factors bringing the changes in the provision for liability so you will have idea about the movement now this formula can be used you know that we have two kind of warranties if we are using assurance type warranty so this formula can be used sales amount into estimated percentage of provision this formula you can use to calculate the provision in case we are using the assurance type warranty next one students we have few formulas for the leases you know that the most important part in lease we have this five these five conditions uh, based on those five conditions we declare it as either over operating lease or over finance lease. so we are not going to that discussion but during the lease topic we need to calculate the interest expense interest expense can be calculated lease liability at the beginning of the period into discount rate so like that you can calculate the interest expense reduction of lease liability you can calculate periodic lease payment minus interest expense like that you can have the reduction of lease liability for our operating lease, we have to calculate single periodic lease expense that is equal to total undiscounted lease payments dividing by lease term. So these are the possible formulas which you can use in the lease topic. 
another important topic we have in unit number four related to taxes accounting for taxation we will, we will upload another video how to make the different calculations but here we need to take a look the formulas for the dtl and dta dtl stand for deferred tax liability like you are going to pay the tax in the future when it arises when income under gap is greater than future taxable amount that we call as deferred tax liability if income under gap so here we have some formulas related to taxation topic so these formulas can be helpful for you when you are calculating the dtl or dt so we have to understand here when actually dtl arise whenever income under gap is greater than taxable income in that case we have dtl and how to calculate the dtl dtl is equal to future taxable amount into the tax rate in the same way students when the things are other way like when income under gap is less than taxable income in that case we have dta and how we calculate dta future deductible amount into tax rate dta stand for deferred tax assets another formula we are using here for the calculation of deferred tax expense or benefit say we want to calculate the deferred tax expense or benefit this formula will be best to use in order to calculate deferred tax expense or benefit how to calculate income tax expense or benefit you will have current tax expense or benefit plus you need to add deferred tax expense or benefit how we can have current tax expense or benefit taxable income multiplied by tax rate and deferred tax expense or benefit you need to calculate based on this one how much change in dtl balances or how much change in dta balances occurred during the period so the sum of this one you will have deferred tax expenses so once you add these two you will have income tax expense or benefit in the same way students we have a topic in the same unit for accounting for bonds here we have to do the evaluation of bonds two line formula you need to use present value of interest payments plus present value of principal amounts the time you add these two values you will have the value of bond and how we calculate the annual interest expense carrying amount of the bond at beginning of the period into effective interest rate we will have the annual interest expense correct students uh, we have only these much topics in unit number 4 unit number 5 we don't have too much formulas uh, for impairment we already included only for the revenue you need to keep in mind when we calculate the percentage of completion how we calculate cost incurred to date dividing by total cost students with this video we already completed the formula list for the financial accounting portion so for the next video um, we will include the formulas related to costing and management accounting topics and we we will try to complete this formula list maximum in two more videos thank you very much